a very good morning class 11th welcome to my channel by Seema Makhejani and we are going to do the topic called thermodynamics this is your unit 6 of NCRT and this chapter is a bridge between chemistry and physics because you do have thermodynamics in physics too so whatever we require out of thermodynamics in chemistry is what we would be doing in today's class fine now moving on why do we have thermodynamics in chemistry the reason for it is that thermodynamics is a stream of science which leads is due to the heat exchange that's the dynamics that is the changing thing in thermodynamics so when you want to talk about heat exchanges we call it thermodynamics now why is heat important in chemistry now in your chemistry your reactants change to products so whatever bonds are here they are to be broken and this will require energy and in the products you form new bonds and the bond formation always releases energy which means in any chemical process on the reactant side you require energy while when the products are formed it releases energy so there is definitely some energy changes involved which is generally in the form of heat which you are aware of because if the net energy is released we say the process is exothermic which means energy of the reactants is less than the energy of the products therefore your in this case if the energy of the reactants is less than the energy of the products what would happen energy will be required for the reactants you will have to give it heat to lead to the formation of products so this is the situation when we are talking about your endothermic process but if I am talking about the exothermic process, it should be the energy of the products should be less than the energy of the reactants. So that when the reactants change to products, the energy is less and for conservation of energy, there would be heat released. And this heat released is a condition which we use for exothermic processes. Fine. There are certain terminologies which we require to use in thermodynamics and now I would be dealing with what are the terms that are required for you to know when we talk about terminologies of thermodynamics. The two key terms broadly classifying any process in chemistry or in thermodynamics there is something called as a system and rest everything is called as surroundings. So whatever is under observation now of course it is part of universe under observation whatever you are studying is your system now rest of the universe is referred to as the surroundings which also means there would definitely be a boundary between them Now this boundary separates the system from the surroundings and this boundary can be of two types. It could be a real boundary as well as <laughs> it could be an imaginary boundary. I will be taking up example for this. Normally a system in generally it is a gas in a container fitted with a frictionless piston that is normal whenever we study a system normally when we talk about a system it is a system where you have a container in which you have your gas whatever is your gas that you are studying and on top of it there is a piston here which can move up and down and it is frictionless means if the gas pushes it it can move up and if the atmospheric pressure pushes it it can move down also it's a frictionless piston that is under normal circumstances generally system is referred to as this but right now what I am taking is let me take a glass of water glass of hot water let us take the temperature is 70 degrees C 
Now this glass of hot water is what I am studying. So your hot water in this is your system because you would be studying the temperature of this particular hot water. Rest everything is your surrounding which means your surroundings would be the beaker, the room in which you are performing, the house in which you are performing, the lab in which you are performing the experiment, rest everything is the universe or is the surroundings. Now if I talk about the boundary, this part is the real boundary which is your beaker's walls. Now have a look at this part, where is the boundary here, you do not know. Is there any point where you can separate the water from the air above it? The air above it is your surroundings because you are not studying it. You are only studying the water. So this becomes your surrounding. Now between the water and the surrounding, can you see any boundary here? No. So that part of the difference between system and surrounding at this point refers to as the imaginary boundary. Fine. Moving ahead with the types of system, I have taken 100 ml of hot water at 70 degrees C. Now if this is my first system where I have water here. Now in this system as you can see the water is here and this is a open system that means I have not covered my beaker. Now since I have not covered by me, my beaker with the anything which means there can be water which would be evaporating off. Also, heat would be given out from here from this surface to the surroundings. That means in this case, both your matter that is water in the form of water vapor and energy in the form of heat is exchanged between system and surroundings. So this kind of a system where you are able to exchange both matter because water is evaporating and you are able to exchange heat with the surroundings is called as an open system. Moving to the second. In the second case also I have the same water but it is tightly covered with a lid. The same beaker that means I again have 100 ml of hot water but this time it is covered with a tight lid which means the water vapor escaping is not going to happen but definitely the heat exchange is happening but water cannot move out in this case which means what is observed that is in this case you have matter cannot be exchanged but energy in the form of heat is being exchanged between system and the surroundings. Fine? So this system where matter cannot be exchanged because water cannot escape but energy in the form of heat is exchanged is called as a closed systems. Moving on to the third type. Now this again I have my 100 ml of water with at 70 degree C but it is a tightly packed thermos flask. Now in this thermos flask generally we say the temperature does not change but ideally speaking if it is a tightly packed thermos flask with proper glass wool inside this part in the chamber it is totally insulated in, and it is tightly corked which means you have neither water escaping that is neither mass nor energy in the form of heat can be exchanged between the system and surrounding. This kind of a system where you cannot exchange matter as well as energy is called as an isolated system fine so these are the three type of systems that you should know in thermodynamics moving on to the next set of terms is the types of thermodynamic processes that we would deal with under this category the first 
thermodynamic process that I am talking about is called as the isothermal. Now in this isothermal process what happens is your temperature is constant. Now if temperature is constant means temperature does not change that means change in temperature is equal to 0. Such a system where the temperature does not change is called as an isothermal system. Is that fine? So if you have an ideal gas for example PV is equal to NRT. In this case temperature is constant, R is constant, the amount of gas in your piston fixed container is also constant. So this becomes constant. So for such a system P would be equal to this is a constant 1 by V. That means you have P inversely proportional to volume. So if you are asked for a isothermal process and give me a graph it would be P inversely proportional to V and the graphical representation will be like this as we did for the Boyle's law. Fine. The second type of process is called as isobaric. Now bar as you know is a unit of pressure. So we are going to talk about pressure that is there is no change in pressure. If there is no change in pressure which means P is equal to constant and delta P is equal to 0 because there is no change in pressure. So your final pressure and initial pressure remain same. So final minus initial remains 0. Similarly as we did for this PV is equal to NRT. I am talking about my system which is a gaseous system and it is an ideal gas. We know P is constant and your amount of gas is constant and your R is also constant which means in this case you have V is equal to NRP by into T. This is a constant that means V is equal to T into a constant K that means V is directly proportional to T. So the graph would be like your Charles law that is your V versus T it is directly proportional. So the graph will be from the origin and this is what it would be like. Fine. Moving on further. The third process is the isochoric process. Now, in this case, volume of the system is constant. If the volume is constant means there is no change in volume, delta V is equal to 0 because there is no change in volume. Similarly, in this case, you would have PV is equal to NRT. Your volume is constant, N is constant, R is constant, which means P is equal to NRT by V. This is your constant, therefore P is directly proportional to T as we did for the Gay-Lussac's law. So this would be your graph with P and T and you would have them directly proportional. So it will be via the origin and this can be a representation for a isochoric process. Fine. So these are the three processes that we have done till now. There is one more important process which I would be continuing. Thermodynamic processes are four in types. We have finished three isothermal, isobaric and isochoric. Moving on to the fourth process which is the adiabatic process. Now an adiabatic process is where there is no transfer of heat between system and surrounding. That means Q, neither heat will be absorbed nor will it be released. So Q becomes equal to 0 in this case there is no change in heat in this stage is that okay so that is called as an adiabatic process of course you can understand since there is no exchange of heat then in that case between no no transfer of heat between system and the surroundings so you should understand that your boundary in this case would be insulated that is why there is no possibility of heat being transferred from the system to the surrounding if this is not possible means your boundary is insulated this does not allow heat transfer fine moving on further we'll be talking about the types of properties that we have in thermodynamics the first category is your extensive properties now under the category of extensive properties these are mass or matter dependent which means if the amount of the system changes, these properties will change. Now under this category, the properties which depend on the mass of the mat system would be what? One would be mass, the other would be volume occupied. If there is more mass, volume would be more. 
if there is more mass number of moles is also going to be more furthermore any energy all types of energies it could be kinetic energy it could be potential energy it could be internal energy which would be our next topic so any type of energy also comes under this category of extensive properties now what do we mean by the term intensive property now, intensive property is exactly opposite of extensive now this intensive properties are independent of mass or matter of the system now whether the system is 1 kg or 1 quintal or 1 millimeter in volume that means mass is 1 kg if the mass is 1 gram it doesn't matter the property remains same now quickly give it a thought what are the properties which will not depend on the mass of the system melting point now whether it's 1 gram or 1 kg the melting point doesn't change boiling point whether it's 1 gram of water or it is 100 grams of water the boiling point remains 100 degrees C you have surface tension is another such property which is constant viscosity is another such property which remains constant temperature now whether it's 1 gram of water or 100 grams of water the temperature remains a constant property is that okay density and concentration these are the properties which fall under the category of intensive properties they do not depend on how much of the system do you have so in this class we have done some important terminologies where why did the types of thermodynamic processes we also talked about the outline difference in thermodynamics which is your system and the surroundings how are they different from each other we even talked about the types of systems which could be open, closed and isolated. So this lecture of chemistry is my thermodynamics lecture 1. I would be continuing with the lectures of this particular topic in my next video. So this is the first lecture where our agenda was of the terminologies that we use in thermodynamics. I hope you have liked it. I hope you will get the grasp of this particular chapter. This would involve numericals in the later videos which I would be continuing. Please keep in touch. Please keep liking. Please be my subscribers if possible. Please share the videos in other your classmates with your classmates with your student groups which you know of. Bless you kids. Do well in life. Love you loads. Bye.